Talking to Toyota time with Timmy the Tool Man. Sean is currently underneath the rig, so uh, you won't be able to see him right this second. <laughs> and what we're doing today is we're going to do a transmission flush. Our new friend Joe, that's Joe, he's in need of full transmission fluid flush. And so what we're going to do today is get all of his old fluid out. And the way we're going to do it is we're first going to drain the transmission pan of all the oil that's in there. We're going to put the drain plug back in with a fresh crush washer. We're going to refill what we took out and then we're going to disconnect the return line from the radiator cooler that goes back to the transmission and we're going to put another hose on there and uh, we're going to run the, the engine, drain a cord out, replace a cord, drain another cord out till we've gotten the fluid as clean as we want to get it. We might be done at 12 quarts but we've got 16 quarts with us to make sure that at the end result we got brand new fluid coming out of the cooler line. So we're going to be using Dex Merc which is compatible with Dextron 3 so it says right here for vehicles requiring Dextron 3 or Mercon so that's what we're going to be using as a replacement we're removing the skid plates so we can get to the cooler lines under the car and then I'm going to get underneath and start draining the transmission fluid so I already got the skid plates out of the way I'm now going to remove the drain plug on the transmission drain pan it's a 14 millimeter I just using a 3h drive ratchet with extension That's loose. Bring it up here so you have less chance of spilling. And it looks it looks fairly dark. It doesn't look too bad, but definitely in need of changing. So we're going to let this drain while I work on the next part, which is I'm going to take off the return line from the radiator cooler, the transmission cooler that is in the radiator. And uh, so that's where we're going to be flushing the fluid uh, via the return line. So I show this in my video when I do my transmission cooler install. This is the passenger side of the automatic transmission. This rear line is the return line. This has the fluid that's run through the radiator cooler, the transmission radiator cooler that's in the bottom of the radiator. And the, the cooled fluid is coming back this way. The front one right here this is the send line. This is sending the hot transmission fluid to the cooler in the radiator to be cooled. This passenger side fitting on the bottom of the radiator, this is where the hot fluid enters the radiator cooler. And then you've got these, this radiator cooler, these finned cooler that's immersed in the coolant sitting in here. And it gets cooled through here and then it exits this fitting on the driver's side of the radiator and this returns back to the transmission. So hot fluid going in, gets cooled in the radiator cooler, returns to the transmission. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this, stick another hose on, and this is how we're going to flush the, the old uh, transmission fluid out of the system. We're going to turn the vehicle on, we're going to drain a cord out, we're going to stop, we're going to fill, put a cord in the dipstick tube. We're going to keep on repeating that till we get clean transmission fluid coming into our catch container. So I'm going to remove the return line, the rubber line from the metal fitting on the uh, radiator cooler. I just got some 90 degree bent nose needle nose pliers, compressing the, the constant pressure spring, sliding it out of the way. These are sometimes hard to get off. What I found that works really nice, these are adjustable spark plug wire pullers. They have these rubberized tips so you're not going to really damage anything unless you really crank with like superhuman strength. So I'm just twisting this to break it free of the fitting. See if that got it loose yet? Nope. Still on there pretty good. Let me see if I can twist this with my hand. Nope. I'm not getting it. Oops. Let's see if I can twist it some more. There we go. Okay. You might be fighting this a little bit, but it took a little bit of work to, to twist it back and forth with those uh, spark plug tube wires. Now I'm just twisting it off. You're going to get a little bit of coming out. See that coming out of the uh, return line? So just let that drain out. 
you're not talking a whole lot of fluid. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another piece of hose. You could either use uh, some 3 8 inner diameter line that you buy at an auto parts store. What I have is I have this exact same tube on Joe's truck I because I added an external cooler and I didn't need this line anymore. So I have this exact same hose. I'm going to put that on the fitting and use that as my drain tube. Okay, so like I said, I have the exact same hose that Joe has on his uh, for his return line. I saved it. It's going to slide this on the fitting and take the uh, constant pressure clamp, compress it, slide it in place. Right there. So now that's going to function as our drain tube. Put the drain plug back in the bottom of the transmission pan with a fresh crush washer. Torque it to spec. Then we're going to measure how much fluid we actually drain out of his pan and replace that via the transmission dipstick tube. This is the part number from Toyota for the crush washer for the transmission drain plug. It's 35178-30010. If you could see, it's got two distinct sides to it. It's got a flat side and a kind of a rounded side. The rounded side is the crushing side. So that side, the round side goes towards the pan. The flat side goes towards the bolt. The torque spec for the drain plug on the transmission pan is 15 foot-pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low in foot-pounds, but I have an inch-pound torque wrench that I can do the conversion. So 15 foot-pounds equates to 180 inch-pounds. So I got my computer up. You can see right here the top value is foot-pounds, the bottom is inch-pounds. So, uh, you know, free website. 15 foot-pounds is 180 inch-pounds. Got the drain plug back in with a fresh crush washer. I'm cinching it down just a little bit with a regular ratchet. And I normally don't follow torque specs with drain plugs because I know how to tighten things without stripping them, but that would be right where I would stop on on an, any application. But let's see what the if I actually hit the torque spec. This is set for 180 inch-pounds right now. Huh, and it's right there. Perfect. Okay, so this is torque to 180 inch pounds. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the transmission fluid that I drained into the, the, the oil catcher, we're going to pour it into another container that will show us how much we actually drained out. So, now what we're doing is I'm transferring the drain fluid into a, a container that has graduated quart marks so we can see how much we drained out. Give us a ballpark figure to add back in. So what are we at, Sean? It's like five and a half. Five and a half, huh? Yeah. Wow. That's quite a bit. This bench is probably level, more level than the uh, floor. It looks like it's close to like five and a third, five and a half that we drained out. So we're going to, we could basically add the whole five gallon, but this is what we're going to use. You know, we're going to use this as our gauge so when we drain another quart out of the system, we can accurately add a quart back. Okay, so after measuring how much you took out, you got to take your dipstick out of the dipstick tube, set it aside somewhere where you're not going to step on it. You got to get a skinny funnel like this. This is a nice transmission funnel. Put that securely in there. And then now, we're going to add what we took out. So we took out almost five and a half quarts. So we're going to start with this one gallon container, which is four quarts, right? Yes. Four quarts. Yes, okay. Indeed. So we just put in four quarts via the gallon container. Now we're, we measured off another quart. We're going to add that in so that that's going to bring us to five quarts. Okay, now we're adding a half. Basically replaced everything we drained out of the pan. Five and a half quarts. Okay, so here's our setup. I've got the drain tube connected to the hose that's going to drain into my catcher and I'm going to be able to know how much is drained out so we know how much to add back in. 
Sean is going to be in the vehicle. He's going to start it and stop it when I tell him to. And then we've got Joe over here, and he's going to do the adding of the fluid back into the transmission dipstick tube to add what we take out every time we run it and stop it. Okay, Sean, start the engine. Okay, stop. So I brought it. We're going to start off by adding a quart and a half because I wanted to get it to equal quarts, and then we're going to go for, for one quart increments. So now we're adding the one and a half quarts that we took out. So Sean's going to start the vehicle again. I'm going to get it up to the eight quart mark, and then Joe's going to add a quart via the dipstick tube. Go ahead, Sean, start it up. Okay, stop. Okay, so now we're at the eight quart mark, and now Joe's going to add another quart. Start it again. Stop. Go ahead, Sean, start it again. And now we're going to the 10 quart mark. Stop. Okay, we're now gonna go to 11. It's already starting to look cleaner. I'm gonna put it against the plastic so I can kind of get a contrast. Go ahead, Sean, start it. That's coming out way cleaner, you can see. Stop. Go ahead, dude. Stop. So as you can see from uh, me pointing the drain tube against the, the plastic, you could see it was coming out really clear, uh, really pink like new fluid. Joe had his head down here looking at it's his truck, so he has the final say, and he's good with us running 12 quarts, which is the capacity of the automatic transmission fluid system on the third gen 4Runners. If you're wondering where all this fluid is coming from once we drain the pan, is the torque converter on the transmission holds a lot of fluid. So you're mainly getting uh, the, le the leftover quarts of fluid in the torque converter. So by running the engine and letting it drain out, you're pushing the new fluid from the pan through the system. It's flushing out the torque converter, going out via the uh, return line from the radiator cooler. And this is like a, a marine type of cooler. So the cooling fins are immersed in the coolant. That's how they're, they're being cooled up. The engine coolant is drawing away the heat from the hot fins when the coolant is running through there and that's how it's being cooled. So now that we're done, I'm just compressing the, the clamp again, and I'm gonna twist this off. Get this out of the way. And now I'm gonna put the original line back on that returns to the transmission. Slide that on, wipe it off a little bit. Again, grab my bent 90 degree needle nose pliers, compress it get it back where it was sitting before. So you have like indentation, so you could basically see where the clamp was sitting before. You just don't want the clamp to be resting on the nipple part of the fitting. You want it compressing on the round part of the fitting. So that means you got to go in a little more inboard than outboard. If I had it like right here, that's where the nipple rests and you don't want it on there. So now we're good to go. The return line is now securely back on. We're going to get 
the truck off the ramps on level ground on the on the garage floor and then we're going to use the dipstick tube to make sure that the, the dipstick uh, is showing in the cold range. So what you want to do is you want to start it while it's still up on the ramps so you can uh, see easier. I'm checking this to make sure that no leaks and then I'm going to get underneath where the drain pan bowls make sure there's no leaks there. And there's no leaks there, it looks good. So now I'm going to have uh, Joe back it off the ramps. We're going to get it on level ground and check the level with the dipstick. After you get done and you're back on level ground, you want to run it through all the gears. So from park, going to reverse, going to neutral, going to drive, going to second, going to low, and then we'll go back the same way to second, to drive, to neutral, to reverse, and to park. And this is how, this is how you have to check your uh, transmission fluid. So you uh, have it running, run it through the gears, and then you uh, use your dipstick to check the level. So let's see where we're at. We purposely didn't add the last cord in because we might have been a little off on some of the uh, measurements adding in, so we left the, the last cord out and we're going to see where we're at. So right now, we're right there. The top of the cool mark is right there. See the little notches? That notch is the top uh, cool mark. We're right here, so we're going to turn the engine off. We're going to add a little bit and then recheck. So uh, we're just going to be really conservative since it was a little low where we just added another half a quart. Joe's going to get in and start it and I'm going to check to see now if we're uh, in the cold level. Still a little low. You might, you might get deceiving information from this because uh, after you add some in you'll see like streaks of fluid but what you're looking for is a solid amount of fluid on the dipstick. Don't look for like the partial. So it was right about there underneath. I'm going to take another sample and I'll show you. Right there at this edge at the, my thumbnail. So it's still like a quarter inch below the, the low notch on the cold. So we're going to need to add some more. We add another half a quart. We're right at the bottom notch. We're at, right at the bottom notch. So we'll take it for a drive now and we're going to get it uh, up to a hotter temperature and check it there. Okay, so now that we're done filling the transmission fluid to the cold level, we're going to go take it for a drive and heat it up to normal operating temperature. According to the factory service manual, normal operating temperature is 158 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. And so it says, check the fluid level is in the hot range at normal operating temperature. So how do you do that? Well, if you have a year 99 to 2002, the forerunners have a temperature sensor that sends uh, information to the computer. And you can read that information from the computer via two ways. One is this OBD2 diagnostic Bluetooth thing that you hook into your OBD2 port underneath the driver's side, underneath the dash, or you can get a scan gauge. A scan gauge is a lot more expensive tool to use. This is pretty cheap, and I'll uh, give you a link to the one I bought on Amazon. This was like 15, 16 bucks, and then I have my phone. On my Android phone, I have this Torque Pro app. So this Torque Pro app, you can buy for like five bucks. And it's this Torque Pro is only good for Android phones. If you have an Apple iPhone, I'm sure you could look up and find an application that will also pair with a, a Bluetooth OBD2 diagnostic uh, reader. Okay, so since his truck is a 2000, it will work. Supposedly, if you have a 96 to 98, it won't give you a transmission temperature. All it has it's kind of a, an idiot light, if you want to call it, to where if it gets too hot, it's going to show an idiot light on the dash, letting you know you're too hot. And that supposedly 
hits at 300 degrees, which means you basically cooked your fluid. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my Bluetooth reader with my Torque Pro app on my Android phone. We're going to take it for a drive. We're going to get it up to that operating temperature, come back to my garage on level ground. We're going to recheck the fluid and make sure that it's in the hot range on the dipstick. Now you might be asking, why is it important to monitor your transmission fluid temperature? Well, one is that heat kills transmission fluid. So this uh, guide that I brought up online, this is actually shows the, the transmission life expectancy chart, but this also doubles as the, the transmission fluid uh, life. So they say at 175 degrees Fahrenheit, your transmission fluid will basically last like 100,000 miles. But with uh, a normal system with a normal radiator cooler, the, you know, the transmission cooler in the radiator, you are going to see higher temperatures, especially if you drive in the mountains or you tow or you go up, uh, you know, up in the mountains with a lot of gear like you're going camping. So I'll give you an example. When I went on a trip, I was towing a motorcycle trailer. I had a bunch of gear in the back and I also had the overdrive off. And I'll just say right now is having the overdrive off that little button on the side of your um, shift lever, turning off overdrive when you're climbing mountains or climbing uh, steep hills on the highway. That is one of the best things you can do to keep your transmission temperature down. If you're going to be going under 60 miles an hour up a grade, up a mountain road, turn your overdrive off because that's going to drop your transmission temperature by as much as 20 degrees. That is one of the best things you could do to keep your transmission fluid temperature down. The other thing is, is you can add an external cooler like I did on my truck and that drops your transmission temperature down by another 20 degrees. So getting back to my point, I had the overdrive off. I was climbing a steep grade, pulling the motorcycle trailer with a bunch of gear. I hit about 232, pretty high. And when you see this chart, it says varnish forms in your, uh, in your transmission at 240. When you get up even a little higher, look, at the, look how long the life lasts. So at 240 degrees, it's only going to last 20,000 20, miles. At 260 degrees, your transmission fluid is really going to last 10,000 miles. So the key is to keep the temperature down and monitor it if you can. If you have a 96 through 98, you'll, if you want to monitor your transmission temperature, you're going to have to add some type of uh, aftermarket sensor somewhere in the line to where you could run it to an uh, aftermarket gauge so you can uh, so you can read it. If you don't want to bother doing it, just use the tips that I gave you. Turn overdrive off when you're climbing mountains going under 60 uh, miles per hour or 60 miles per hour or under. And if you want to even keep it even lower, add an external cooler like I show in the one of the video where I show adding an external cooler to the front of my air conditioning condenser to drop my, my temperatures down by another 20 degrees. Okay, so this is your OBT2 reader right here. This is right underneath the dash. You can see like if you go straight down from where your key is in the ignition, go down, it's got a shape to it. So it's like a, what, a trapezoid? And just slide it in there. Now that's gonna be sending information to my Android phone and to the Torque Pro app. Here's the Torque Pro app giving me information via the Bluetooth uh, OBT2 reader. His coolant temperature is at 172. His trans, ten, trans temperature is at 123. So we're going to drive it down the highway, a few exits, like maybe about five miles. We're going to come back five miles, back into my garage on level ground. And we're and, and if the temperature is in between 158 and 176, we're going to expect to see the transmission fluid has expanded and it's in the hot range now. So you can see that we've now got it into operating temperature. He's at 172 degrees. Here's an interesting note. His coolant temperature is high. This is a hot day in California, but even so, you should probably only be seeing about 194, not 204. So there's a couple things that could be causing that. Either his thermostat uh, jiggle valve is in the wrong position or his fan clutch is on its way out not working well enough to pull air through the uh, radiator so uh, this is uh, could be of a well this is a concern because he's running too hot but transmission temperature is an operating range we're going to get to my house 
put it in the garage and check the level. So we're back from our drive. He's gonna run it through the gears again. And then he's gonna go back up one gear at a time, shifting in all the gears. Where is it? See where our Torque Pro app is at? So this is perfect. He's at 177 degrees for trans temperature. So now we're right in that operating range that the Toyota factory service manual says to be in and we're gonna make sure that the dipstick is now in the hot range. So we are, we are right here. We're just above the cold, so we're a little low. So we have to add to where we get in the hot range right here. We're right here. So we gotta get up to here, so we have to add some. So we had to add a little more, but what you wanna see is solid fluid, not partial. So you could kinda, of, I don't know if you could see with this camera, but see how it's like, it's not solid right there? So that's not where you're filled to, it's where you see complete fluid covering the dipstick. So we're right at the top notch of the hot, and you check both sides and it looks good. See how it's partial here, but then it's a fully wet right here. So that means that's where your level is. You want to see full wetness on the dipstick. So this last clip is going to look like a bad uh, Japanese Godzilla movie where my lips aren't going to match the audio because we lost the original audio. But what you learned today is how to fully flush your transmission fluid. You first drain the pan of all the fluid. You measure it to see how much you drained out. You replace that amount via the transmission dipstick tube. Then you disconnect the return line off the transmission cooler, put another line on and have that going into your drain bucket. And you drain a cord out, you add a cord. You drain another cord out, add another cord. You keep on doing that till the fluid is as clean as you want it. Uh, the capacity is about 12 quarts, so you should be seeing really clean fluid at about the 12 quart mark like we did. Uh, the cold level on the transmission fluid uh, dipstick is just kind of a guideline. So what I suggest is fill the transmission fluid uh, to the cold level if it's not already there. Take it for a drive, heat it up to normal operating temperature, which is 158 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, on level ground, uh, run it through the gears, and then double check to make sure that the level is now in the hot range. If it isn't, add a little bit and top it off, and you'll be good to go. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and uh, we'll be back with more videos. Thanks a lot. So we've uh, driven down the freeway a few miles. We're coming back. You're going to want to get in the other lane. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right, because I've got to turn right. you got to turn right. Sorry about that. That's okay.